from Revelation and from Hebrews, the writers envision this amazing gathering of countless saints before the throne of God. In Revelation, it's just as far as the eye can see, the saints robed in white. That's one of the reasons why we wear white for baptism and when we have the pall for funerals, that we are to be robed in white, and that's why when we leave worship during these days, we wear white owls. And in the Hebrews passage, the word, the phrase is that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. In Greek, that the phrase is nephos marturon, nephos meaning cloud, and marturon meaning witness. The idea is that these are the people who have been able to see what has happened when God has interacted in this world and with God's people and give witness to this even when they are no longer with us. They are surrounding us like a cloud that we are feeling their presence, we invoke their memory, and that they are giving witness to the work of God today in our church and in our world. I wonder who is in your cloud? Who is in your cloud? Who are the ones who are your witnesses? Take out your bulletin. Turn to the front cover and pull out one of your nifty little pencils here from the front. <clears throat> See all these candles here? They're like the candles that we have up front. I want you to write down who is in your cloud of witnesses. Who do you know who has passed on to eternal life? Whose name would you put under the candles? Leave at least one candle blank and just write down some of those names. Like for myself, I wrote down my grandmother, my grandma and my pappy, we called him pappy. I wrote down my Aunt Joanne. I wrote down my best friend, Jenny. I wrote down Mam Mam, my husband's grandmother. Go ahead and just take a moment. Who would you write down under your candles. And if you're a kid and you don't know too many people who have died, you can write down a pet or somebody that's special to you, okay? Anybody that you want to write down there, just take a moment and write down who, who would you light a candle for today? And as you're writing these names down, I want you to think about this word, witness. A witness is somebody who tells the truth about what they have seen and what they have heard. These names that you wrote down are witnesses for you in two ways. First of all, they are a witness to who you are, the kind of person that you are, your character. The people that I wrote down know me. They know my good points, they know my faults, and they love me anyway. They've helped to shape who I am. They have left an indelible impression on me so that even after they're gone, I can give witness to their life through my own actions through my attitudes, from the way I teach my children, from the way I pastor. All of these people who I've named have been a witness to me and my life witnesses to them. So that's one way these saints are a witness, but there's another way in which they are a witness. They witness to God. They witness to God's character. They witness to 
what God has done, who God is, how God has shaped their lives, what influence God has had on their hearts and on their decisions and on the way they've tried to make things right when they've made mistakes in their lives. So that when they are gone, the people who are left are still able to remember these people and know who God is by remembering that person who died. They are witnessing their faith. They are witnessing their community. They are a witness to God. Now I want you to just turn to someone next to you and share who did you write down on your candles and why they are a witness to you. Just take a moment and do that. Who did you write that down? <laughs> I'll just share with you two of the ones that I wrote down. My pappy, how he was influential to me. My pappy used to put us on his lap. He would sing a hymn that is still one of my favorites today, Bringing in the Sheaves. Remember Bringing in the Sheaves? And he would, he would bounce us on his lap, bring in the sheaves, bring in the sheaves. And he would make us laugh while we, he would sing this. He would bounce us on his knee. So whenever I, we sing that hymn for, uh, for Harvest Sunday, I always remember that. And then he would turn it into rock by the baby, rock by the baby. And then I sang that with my own children as well. So I didn't know it when he was singing this little ditty for me that this was a hymn. It was a hymn of faith. And so as I got older, I realized what kind of an influence he had on me in a very fun-loving way. He was also a people person. My, for, to my grandfather, you were a friend until proven otherwise. He was the kind of person that would just go up to anybody and ask them who they were, where they came from, what do you do, where do you go to church, what do you, you know. He was just one of, and people just loved his friendliness. He was so welcoming. He would help out people in the neighborhood. He loved to garden. He was just a, a, a lovely human being. And I can see the influence he's had on me. And, and I, I think about, you know, when I greet people as a pastor, I invoke his memory. I do what Pappy, what I saw Pappy doing when I greet people and I talk to them and I ask them questions. That's what my Pappy taught me to do. Sometimes, though, in our cloud of witnesses, we may have people who were not necessarily Christian but still taught us values that can be considered Christian values. For example, my friend Jenny. She and I were friends all the way through high school. We were each other's maid and matron of honor at our weddings. She was the person who knew me better than anybody else. We had all of our inside jokes, and we saw each other through all kinds of relationships and problems with our families and school. And our joke was that we were going to be the little old ladies in the nursing home listening to our 80s music. And grooving and, and, and just having and watching old friends reruns and, and just having a high old time. And sadly for me, I was not able to be able to live that reality because she got cancer and she died. And I have still never really recovered that. I feel like something was taken from me by not having her in my life. Jenny was not a Christian. She didn't grow up in a Christian household. And 
she and I had had many discussions about this, but she just didn't, it was just not something that she believed in. But I came to realize that in some ways, Jenny was more of a Christian than some Christians I know. She was, uh, she worked in Alzheimer units at, uh, at the local nursing home. She was an activities director. And the kind of abuse that she took and trying to deal with people in those situations, the messes she had to clean up, the way that she talked to those people with respect, honored them as human beings. I mean, she dealt with the people that no one else wanted to deal with. She did the ministry that Jesus calls us to do. She ministered to the least of these, to the outcasts. And to me, she taught me so much about what it means to sacrifice in order to minister to somebody else. So even though she wasn't a Christian, I consider her part of my cloud of witnesses because of what she taught me. You know, our church has a great cloud of witnesses as well. We are surrounded by the people who founded this church, the people who have helped to build this church and to make it what it, what it is now. We are surrounded every day by the people who have influenced the history and the faith of this congregation. They are the ones who've left a legacy that we look at now and we say, thank God for those saints who came to this church and saw God's work here in this place and wanted that work to continue. And so they taught Sunday school, and they served on council, and they gave faithfully every Sunday, and they made sure that the infrastructure of the church was in place, and they called pastors. Pastors come and go, but the congregation is that great cloud of witnesses that remains. And the other way that they continue to witness to the church is that some of them actually left a financial legacy for the church. They named the church in their will so that even after they died, they put aside money for the church to continue to do the good work that they themselves were doing while they were alive. And so that great cloud of witnesses, in a sense, continues to shower its blessings on us long after we have, helped, we have lit their candle and committed them to God, they continue to bless us through their witness. It's sometimes hard to think about the fact that each one of us will have a candle lit for us at some point. That's why I asked you to let one candle oh, no. open. Your name is going to go at one of those candles at some point. We're talking about things that society doesn't much like to talk about. That someday we all will be committed to God. But we don't do that with a sense of foreboding or fear or being moribund. We do this out of joy, knowing that the work that we have done on this earth in the name of Christ, to build the kingdom, will carry on in a great cloud of witnesses that goes far beyond our lives. You are connected in ways that you probably can't even see or know now. I think about your mom, Shirley, and yours, Jane. The kind of work that she did and the money that she left behind for the quilts. And I think about those quilts that have gone out to hundreds of people around the world. The work that she left behind, the funds that she left, are now embracing war refugees and people affected by disease and people all over the world whom she has never met her legacy carries on. I think about our Swanger Fund, Bruce Swanger, 
and he left money for our church and has enabled our youth room to be able to be renovated. And all kinds of things that we've done around this church because of the way he named the church and said, I want the work of the church to continue even after I'm gone. There are so many other names that I could mention of people who have said, I want to have an impact. I want to leave a legacy for even after I'm gone. Have you named the church in your will? Have you thought about how you can let the work that you've done here continue even after you have been entered into the great cloud of witnesses? Now, for the kids and some of the younger couples, you think, well, you know, I don't really have that much to leave behind. But it's not so much how much you leave behind. It's the fact that you intentionally named the church in your last will and testament to say, this is the congregation that I love, that I want to see that work carry on. Richard Huff named the church in his will. Sadly, because of the fire and his medical bills, we were not able to receive anything from that. But here's the thing. His intentionality was tangible. It was imprint. It was listed. He named this congregation as one that was important to him. He wanted to see that work carry on. We didn't know this in the congregation, but it's like that intentionality went out through like a great cloud enveloping all of us. And so when we established the Rich Huff Fund, the money that we now have in that fund probably exceeded what he would have ever been able to leave the church in his room. It's the intention. It's the being able to say, I name this church. I want this church to continue to do this good work. I want to leave a legacy. I want to see the great cloud of witnesses expand and continue. You may be thinking that this is a day to be sad because we are thinking about those who have passed on. And it's okay to cry. It is okay to shed a tear in church. That is a sign of our honoring and loving those people who had such an impact on us. But that's also why we light candles for those who have been born and who have been baptized in this last year. We are witnesses now for these newly baptized individuals. When they were brought to this church, they are now part of the great cloud of witnesses. They are connected to something that's bigger than themselves. And so we can ask ourselves as a congregation, what do we want to teach them? What do we want them to learn about who God is and who we are as people of faith in relationship to God? What work do we want to do what do we want to, how do we want to reach out to the community with our oaks? How are we going to bless our children to go to Detroit and do the work of God's heart with their hands? How are we going to collect these gifts to send to those children and families in need in our community? How are we going to go to St. Andrew's tomorrow and serve the meal to those who are hungry. How are we going to do these things? We do them as a community of faith, bearing witness, methos motorum. We are the great cloud of witnesses. We are being witnessed by those who have gone before. We are being witnessed by our newly baptized and all of this is taken in and blessed by our Lord Jesus Christ, who takes the great cloud into himself, blesses us to do the work of 
God's kingdom. Amen. Thanks be to God.